I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to the lean mass hyperresponder or the person who has uh, excessively elevated cholesterol and uh, probably LDLs as well, and even the third category would be the person that has very high triglycerides. Um, if you could just speak a little bit to the person that has that reaction when they go carnivore or keto, that would be awesome. Yeah, so people also get that reaction when they go animal-based. So if people are not familiar with this phenotype, the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype is something that happens to, I would guess, the majority of humans. Not all humans, but the majority of humans. I would think 60 to 70% of humans have an increase in LDL uh, if you're measuring LDL in milligrams per deciliter. So if you're measuring LDL density of LDL, which is milligrams per deciliter, then I think 70% of humans are going to see an increase in LDL uh, when they increase their saturated fat in the diet. And so when you really look into this, there's a pretty clear correlation between the ratio of saturated fat to mono plus polyunsaturated fat. So if you're eating more mono or poly together, then your LDL is going to be lower. If you're eating more saturated and less mono and poly, your LDL for 67% of people, observationally, is going to be higher. About 30% of people, LDL doesn't move. And you're like, okay, I don't know what's going on there. But for a lot of people, LDL goes up when you eat more saturated fat and you decrease mono and polyunsaturated fat. You will all know, listeners will all know, that I'm no fan of excess polyunsaturated fat, whether it's in the form of fish oils or especially not in the form of seed oils, corn, canola, safflower, sunflower, soybean, grapeseed, whatever. So that, those will lower your LDL, but not in a good way. And we'll talk about that. But if you also have less monounsaturated fat, so if you decrease, if you don't have a lot of olive oil, which I'm actually not, not a huge fan of either, or if you're not eating a lot of avocados, your LDL will go a little higher. And I think this is just a physiologic reaction in most people's bodies. There's a lot of reasons this could be happening. There's, there's actual, you know, there's transcription factors, there's elements that are responsive in the genome to saturated fat that get turned on when you have more saturated fat. There's something called the homeoviscous model of membranes that's been promulgated recently whereby people suggest that when you're eating more saturated fat that your body has to increase the LDL to carry more of the cholesterol molecule to make the membranes have a uh, standard level of viscosity, fluidity in the membrane because we know that if you have more saturated fat in your membrane, perhaps it's more stiff membranes. You need to put in more cholesterol molecules, which are steroid moiety, to give the membrane more fluidity. So there's, it's possible the body is shifting LDL levels to keep membranes the same level of fluidity. And in the reverse can happen too. If you're eating more monounsaturated fat or more polyunsaturated fat, those mono and polyunsaturated fats end up in the membrane. They make the membrane more fluid, and then the body can lower the amount of cholesterol because it pulls it out because it's trying to make the membrane a little less fluid, a little more uh, robust because of these, potentially, these kinked fatty acids. It has to do with the way the fatty acid looks in three dimensions. That monounsaturated fat or polyunsaturated fat has a curved tail, so it makes the membrane a little bit less packed and maybe a little more fluid. So that's the homeoviscus model, but this is all speaking to the question of why LDL may rise on carnivore ketogenic diet. I think the answer is probably because there's more saturated fat in the diet, and relative to mono and poly. And whether that's because of a homeoviscus model, or steroid responsive binding elements in the genome, or what, we don't fully understand, but that happens. What also happens in the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, which I think is a healthy quote unquote phenotype, is that triglycerides usually go down, and HDL usually goes up, and fasting insulin goes down. So those are, that's the direction we want in everything to move. So this is what gets ignored by all of Western medicine, and I say all you know, with a little bit of a, a smirk. I think probably there are increasing physicians who understand this now, so not all of Western medicine, but the majority of Western medicine sees LDL, becomes myopic and hyperfocused, and doesn't, doesn't think, what are your triglycerides, what's your HDL, what's the ratio, or check a fasting insulin. I think the world would change in Western medicine if they just checked a fucking fasting insulin. <laughs> Uh, right? So that's, that, that's predictably what happens when you do this in the lean mass hyperresponder. So the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype is a term coined by Dave Feldman, which is low triglycerides, high HDL, elevated LDL. So I've seen my LDL go all over the place, right? When I was carnivore, it was higher than it is now that I'm eating carbohydrates, maybe because I'm eating more saturated fat, maybe because ketones also can contribute to the development of LDL, because there's another pathway by which, which ketones share the same common pathway with acetyl-CoA, which can also be more made into cholesterol and increase your LDL. So ketosis probably increases LDL. Fasting increases LDL, we know that much. So again, there are a lot of mechanisms to increase LDL, but the foundational question is, do we believe that low-density lipoprotein, a spherical molecule that carries triglycerides and cholesterol, is inherently atherogenic or damaging to the endothelium, the inside of an artery? I believe the answer is no, but many would disagree with me, and we need many more of those debates. I think there's a lot of good evidence that that particle 
has not been indicted fully. See, that particle is definitely causing atherosclerosis. It gets involved, but is it a fireman or the arsonist? Right? Just because it shows up at the fire doesn't mean it's actually causing the fire. This is nuanced, but it's important to understand because most of Western medicine is predicated on the notion that you have more LDL, you're going to have more atherosclerosis. And there's studies ongoing now, Dave Feldman is doing one, with image, imaging. So he's doing CT coronary angiography in people who are lean mass hyperresponders and following them longitudinally to see are they going, are they going to uh, have more atherosclerosis with higher levels of LDL relative to another cohort? I think the answer will be no, but we'll, we'll see. It's just a hypothesis now. And if they don't, then, then it's really going to shake the foundations of LDL as a primary mover, or ApoB, which is essentially synonymous with LDL, if you guys have heard of ApoB. ApoB is an apolipoprotein that's on the LDL surface. So where does this leave us? It leaves us in the fact that I think it's evolutionarily consistent for humans to seek saturated fat and to have lower amounts of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fat. The problem for me is that I haven't found an indigenous population that are lean mass hyperresponders. And this isn't to say they don't exist. There's not a lot of indigenous populations left in the world. So my ancestors, if we could find my ancestors somewhere, like we trace it back, and whether it's Northern Europeans 50, 60,000 years ago, or before they left Africa, like somewhere in my lineage is probably uh, an indigenous person who is eating meat and organs and fruit and honey, and they have a high LDL too, right, quote unquote. But we haven't seen that yet, because what we see in the Hadza, what we see in most hunter-gatherers is a lower LDL of around 100. My LDL runs about 220 right now, but then my triglycerides are 70, my HDL is usually 85, and this is milligrams per deciliter. Moving back to the last thing, then I'll move on from this question, is that when LDL goes up, if the particle size doesn't is what increases, not the particle number usually. And people want to say, oh, particle number is important. I'm actually not convinced the particle number matters that much. Um, I think it's all or mostly metabolic health. And are you insulin resistant or not? Are you metabolically healthy or not? What is your passing insulin? So when I did my, uh, my lipid panel where my LDL was very high, my LDL was massive. I think it was 24.7 nanometers, which is a huge particle of LDL. It's like I, almost out of the reference range. It's like such a big particle of LDL. A, a large LDL particle would be like 22 to 23 nanometers. Mine was 24.7 nanometers. So, big balls. <laughs> Spherical LDL balls. Okay, next question. <laughs> 